forests are very valuable in terms of timber and a lot of the value that people perceive as forests comes from the timber and fibre and paper that comes from them. But looking, people are looking increasingly at the other values that are coming from forests, so the natural capital of the forest. So that could be the biodiversity, it could be the carbon, it could be the ecotourism value, it could be the water, it could be the natural disaster prevention. And when you look at the finances around those and do analysis, the actual values of the natural capital are far in excess of the values that you actually get from the timber or the paper. So by looking at those other ways of valuing forests, we're able to create mechanisms whereby it makes sense to keep a forest as a forest as opposed to turning it into something else and losing that resource. Well, we see this as creating tools by which you can actually add value to forests. So at the moment, um, the opportunity costs of doing other activities such as palm oil or, or uh, soy or uh, rubber or grazing often are very much higher than keeping a forest as a forest. So by doing this, you can actually create economic value for that forest resource. And you do it not just at the level of the forest, you have to look at the wider landscape and look at the different things that would create livelihoods for the people who live there. So it's a, it's a more holistic way of looking at the forest resource and looking at ways of valuing that forest resource. And that can contribu contribute to green growth by providing uh, mechanisms and payment services and a market for generating value, such as value for biodiversity or value for the carbon, value for the water, that can then go to the forest manager or the community or the smallholder and, and provide that incentive for them to maintain the forest and for them to manage the forest in a sustainable or responsible way. Doing certification is quite complicated and we have very rigorous rules. We're very concerned about our credibility. So that credibility is what makes FSC very viable. And so we work with multi-stakeholders, with governments, with social stakeholders, with environmental stakeholders, with economic stakeholders. And having that uh, dynamic tension in our governance with all these different stakeholders can mean that it's quite complicated to get consensus about what is good forest management, what is responsible forest management. But by having that consensus, we then have a, a far stronger system that allows us to um, keep all those stakeholders involved and support the forest manager for what they do and support the forest management for going forward in the, in the, in the future. So that complicated standard development process is difficult, but it also provides a strength. And for the last 20 years, FSC has been doing this. We've managed to maintain that complex uh, dynamic tension between the org different organisations involved. So we have Greenpeace, we have WWF, we have very strong uh, indigenous people's representation, workers' representation, and we have companies. And those three different chambers all have equal say in how FSC sets its rules. And that can be quite complicated, it can be very horribly democratic, but it actually creates a lot of power for uh, the, the final product of the certification label. And that certification label then has a uh, big value in the market because customers believe in it and retailers use it and businesses want to buy it. And, and that then um, provides for the incentive for the forest managers to improve what they do because they have a financial incentive from the supply, pulling down the supply chain to improve their forest management. Yeah, so the, the surveys that we do show that uh, consumers will choose a certified product, but they'll also look at price and quality, but if it's the same price and quality, then they'll choose the, the certified product. Um, increasingly, we're actually seeing consumer awareness increasing in, in some markets. Uh, European markets have very high awareness of FSC, and in some sectors, if you don't have FSC certification, then you don't really get market access. So in tissue paper or office paper or in charcoal or some kinds of furniture. Increasingly also now we're seeing in Asia that markets are becoming more aware too. So we're really looking at the future, the future of all these things where we're actually going to make an impact. It's going to be in China, India, Indonesia, Thailand, Malaysia. And there we're actually seeing uh, more and more brands wanting to use the FSC label to tell the story about why they're an ethical brand and why the, the forest products they're using are from a sustainable or responsibly managed source. And we've actually seen consumer awareness start to grow. So for instance in Hong Kong, We've gone from 2011, we had about 10% consumer awareness to 36% now. So that's quite an impressive growth in terms of consumers in this region who are actually starting to recognise that label and are starting to then be able to choose in the supermarket whether to buy an FSC certified product or a non-FSC certified product. And that easy choice, we can then say to them, actually makes a difference 
in the forest. So by making an easy choice, you can make a, an impact in the forest, man, to the forest manager.